Well, coal industry groups sounding the alarm today that a fifth of America's electricity generating capacity is about to be taken offline thanks to new federal regulations. They say that this will lead to widespread power outages, rolling blackouts, job losses, and skyrocketing energy costs. Now, this all stems from EPA rules requiring coal companies to slash emissions and soon. Supporters of those rules cite huge health gains and public safety as justification. But critics are warning it may do more harm than good. Joining me now for a fair and balanced debate, Chris Horner with the Competitive Enterprise Institute, also author of Red Hot Lies, How Global Warming Alarmists Use Threat, Fraud and Deception to Keep You Misinformed, and Angel Reyes, a Texas-based civil attorney. Uh, gentlemen, thank you both so much for being here. So this, there are uh, EPA rules going into effect trying to crack down on emissions. And Chris, there are terrible, terribly dire warnings coming out now from the regulated industry saying basically the sky's going to fall if these go into effect. True? Well, yes. Two years ago, the industry group, uh, Edison Electric, uh, said that they would have to bring 77 gigawatts. This is just put it in perspective, 77 gigawatts offline thanks to this rule. The chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission recently sent a letter saying actually it's 81 gigawatts, so it's not just industry. And the complaint is, by the way, reliability. And the chairman of FERC, who is an Obama appointee, and he is a longtime activist, as I detailed in my book Power Grab, He's actually saying EPA has not lifted one finger to work with FERC on reliability. But, but, it's but not just, about just, cost. Just take a, Industry take a step passes back. costs take a step on. Back so people understand what we're talking about. What's happening here, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, and then I'm going to get to Angel, is the feds are saying to the states, we are not satisfied with how you are enforcing uh, clean air and, and emissions rules. And so we are now going to take control of it, and we are going to tell the coal companies, et cetera, what kind of emissions are okay and, and are not okay. And those who are going to be subject to these regulations are saying you're trampling on states' rights, you are re requiring too many stringent um, rules, of, and it's going to lead to job losses and factory shutting down and so on. Chris and then Angel. There's a lot involved here. There's a suite of regulations called the train wreck. One of them is EPA seizing control from some states, and another is the one at issue here that's going to bring all these plants offline, and that's the reliability issue. That's what's called a MAC rule. Now, that's going to cost about $20 billion, it seems, but EPA in its own rulemaking said there are no hazardous air pollutant benefits that they could quantify, read, identify from this rule. So it's all pain, no gain. It's in furtherance of the war on coal that the president announced in January 2008 when he said, if you want to build coal, I'll bankrupt you. And then his allies with Sierra Club said, by the way, you need to close existing coal, too. That's what this is about. It's a reliability question, not not cost. Industry gets to pass all its costs on to the economy, to the ratepayer. They're only concerned about their obligation to provide reliable electricity. Okay. And this rule says we're going to have blackouts. Let me get Angel's defense of the industry on this. <laughs> Well, Megan, you had it exactly right when you described uh, what's really going on here. And basically, my, my response is that fear-mongering by industry is uh, nothing new. I think that all of us have heard fear-mongering over the years. And in this case, fear-mongering is going to basically not affect the job losses that they're claiming. I don't think any jobs are going to get lost. Industry doesn't like regulation. They hate it. And any new regulation is claimed to be the, the, the sky will be falling. And in fact, the sky is halfway down, on, halfway down right now. Well, let me ask so, you about that, I Angel, because a, a Heritage report uh, s suggests that the Commerce Department itself is estimating that, this, that these regulations are going to cost 60,000 jobs, that, that, that the, own, you know, the administration is forecasting that, according to this Heritage report. Well, the two reports that I've actually been uh, able to look at and read suggest that, uh, first of all, that jobs will be lost, but they were actually written by industry. So it's no surprise to me that the industry writes up uh, reports where jobs are going to be lost, and that creates a lot of fear, especially in uh, most communities today. But with respect to that cross-pollution uh, cross uh, issue that the EPA is raising, i got to tell you that I live in the state of Texas, and we have the worst air now that, that, than any other state, and that's mostly because we have the lightest regulation of the, of the most uh, polluting uh, companies and industries in the country. Well, apparently so you're, you're about to lose. It's a, a great well, deal of that control to the to the feds yeah. who are stepping in. Let me ask you, Chris. You know, to those yeah. who are who are saying uh, this is about clean air and making sure that people are protected, uh, and they also say that it's actually a bunch. Of, to the extent coal plants are going to be shut or, or or shut down for a while, it's old ones that are inefficient. It's not that big a deal. You say what? Well, first of all, the administration provided a higher figure of plants that are going to have to be taken offline here than even industry said. So when you hand wave and yell industry, industry, you're just changing the subject from the numbers. The numbers are the Obama administration 
FERC has said it will be even more plants taken offline. And there's been some confusion. I'm shocked, shocked there's been some misleading going on in the last 24 hours over this issue. Here's what it is. A lot of these plants were going to be ultimately put on its peak, but when it gets really hot, when there's severe weather, if there's a cyber attack, they're reserve plants. Under this rule, they have to mothball them. So claiming I'm going to move these into reserve for hot weather or severe weather or cyber attack is not the same as saying I have to shut them down. They did not say largely that's the case. You're talking about, according to the Obama administration, taking 81 gigawatts offline. You don't replace that with windmills and solar panels. They work about a fifth of the time. Coal works all the time. When you take it offline, you've got a real problem. You've got blackouts, yeah. and the administration, not industry, acknowledges this. What of that, Angel? Because if Chris is right, we're going to see it, right? It's not like something we'll just have to wonder whether he was right about. We're going to see rolling blackouts. We're going to see brownouts if he's right. Uh, we'll see the loss of a fifth of the nation's electricity, electricity generating capacity. Do you reject that that's going to happen? I don't think that's going to happen at all because what's really happening is industry has almost 10 years over that course of the 10 years to close those dirty coal plants. And each of those plants really is so old, they're all over 40 years old, they all have absolutely no updating at all, and they're the biggest polluters in the country. So it'll be a, Replace them basically with what? a huge. Well, first of all, you can replace them with natural gas. It's under our feet, it's clean, it's cheap, it's abundant, and it's right here in the United States. So that's the, uh, the war term on that, that this industry needs to go to. All right, guys, got to leave it at that. But thank you for teeing up the issue. We appreciate it. More on that in the days to come, I'm sure. All Thanks. the best.